Hey guys, this is Animat, and it's time once again that we find out what's in the box. Alright, so I actually have some good news for this episode. I actually do have enough stuff to go and make a two-parter. So, as you can tell, this is just the letters episode. I actually have a lot of letters to go and read out for you guys. And as for the packages, even though I don't necessarily have a lot in quantity, I still have enough in order to go and separate the two so that one episode could be just letters and the other one could be packages. So with all that said, let's go and get things started, let's not delay the inevitable, and let's start our first one with uh, something that doesn't really have a name on it, so we'll find out who it is. Alright, so it seems like we got a lot of stuff to read, so anyway, so it says, Dear Animat, hello dude, it's me Alexis, how are you today? I'm so sorry about the bad things about Donald Trump and all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyways, despite me being a director and animator of animated films, I'm working on, and I also want to become a cartoonist and creator on the works on animated cartoons and also anime TV series like Chuck Jones, St uh, Stefan Hellenberg, Tex Avery, Satoshi Tajiri, Glenn uh, Mukaragi, and, well, yeah, well, there's a list of, like, so many other people that would inspire him. Uh, but anyways, uh, my goal is to save the Saturday morning cartoons era, just like how Don Bluth saved animation in the late 70s and early 80s, and make good, animated, amazing TV shows, and are always better than the terrible shows that we have, like, uh, Teen Titans Go. I will also make animated TV shows based on some of my favorite movies, just like how Disney did with Tangled and Big Hero 6, as the upcoming TV shows we are getting. My cartoons will air Saturday mornings and also on weekends and weekend afternoons. Also, I want to make my own TV channel that air only good cartoons and Saturday morning cartoons like Boomerang, but better. Anyways, I have a few questions for you. When you review a movie in theaters, do you often go alone watching a movie alone with your family, friends, or girlfriend? Um, it really does depend. Most of the time, I would say like 98% I would, or 95%, I would go and watch it alone. Like, I would just go solo to go see a movie. But it would happen when I would either bring in my friends or even my family members, like my mom, to go and uh, watch a movie and have a second opinion on it. So it does help out when I would have people, but most of the time I would just go at it alone. Uh, what is your most favorite Blue Sky Studios film? Um, I honestly don't know, really. Uh, I guess for now I would say, uh, like, in recent memory I would go with the Peanuts movie. Uh, and, uh, what else? Uh, what live-action movie do you watch in 2015 and 2017? Uh, honestly, there is a lot, but I'll just say right now, in terms of live-action movies, I've seen, well, so far, I've seen Kong Skull Island and Beauty and the Beast, so I guess those ones count. Uh, anyways, uh, where was I? Ah, yes, here we go. Uh, anyways, I hope to see you again, Animat. I can't wait to see your review of Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. Sincerely, Alex A. Alright, so, thank you very much for the letter, Alexis. Alright, so far we got our next one coming from, uh, Flo Anderson, and it looks like it's actually a card we have here. So, let's see what we have. Woo! Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this! It's actually, like, we got, we got, like, a, gr like, a koala wearing some green clothing. Oh, it looks actually pretty cute. Okay, so, oh boy. Alright, so, uh, sending you warm and fuzzy wishes for a happy St. Patrick's Day. Alright, anyways, uh, I don't know if they celebrate that in Canada, but just in case. Oh yeah, absolutely, just saying that right now, yes, we do celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Canada, don't worry. Uh, I think, like, even where I'm, like, where I'm from specifically, we even do St. Patrick's Day parades, so, at least it works out. Hey Animad, how's it going? Uh, I have a question. Uh, any thoughts on any of the casting choices for the live action remake of Beauty and the Beast? Uh, as I write this, it hasn't been released yet. I heard a bit of Emma Watson as Belle, and it sounds like uh, they auditioned her, uh, they auto-tuned her singing voice, so I've lowered my expectations a little, but I'm still excited to see Kevin Kline, one of my favorite actors, as Maurice. 
Well, okay, so I think at this point, a lot of people have probably seen my review of the live-action reboot of Beauty and the Beast, and I would say that I am not necessarily a fan of the casting choices. Uh, I still believe that Emma Watson is a horrible choice as Belle, and she was a terrible actress in that movie. And on top of that, a lot of them sound weird, honestly, but they actually do execute it well. Like, the, the CGI makes them look absolutely horrendous, like all the objects and the beasts, but I do admire the casting choices like Dan Stevens, Luke Evans, Josh Gad, uh, and even some of the ones that are actually pretty surprising, like uh, Emma Thompson and Ewan McGregor, actually. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a mix, I would say. Uh, anyways, so... Okay, love flow. P.S. I've recorded a video of myself playing God Help the Outcasts on my uh, Melodica, which you can also look up and watch on YouTube if interested. Uh, P.P.S. I have an extra Moana sticker sheet that I like you to have. Enjoy. Oh, nice. So, basically, she sent me a little gift of uh, a sticker which also has Maui and a few cute little patterns. All right, that's nice. That's nice. Thank you very much, Flo. Maybe I'll use the stickers to just decorate the little uh, koala card. So, all right, so at least I have that. All right, so next up that we have coming up shall be from Justin Cannon. So let's see what Justin will have for us now. Uh, what is this? Okay. Uh, from the quill of Mr. Gilderoy Lockhart, uh, Order of Merlin, third class, honorary member of the Dark Force Defense League, five times winner of Witches Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award. Dear Animat, I am distinctly honored to have received a letter from you. You you got a letter from me? I don't remember sending you a letter. I get, I get letters, as you can see, but I don't remember receiving letters. Uh, reading it make my heart flutter with delight. It is such a joy to hear how my books and my looks affect my fans. Uh, as a token of my appreciation, I have taken the time to write this letter back to you. Please keep it in a safe and prominent place within your do uh, domicile. You never know what a handwritten letter from me might be worth in the future. Magically yours, uh, Gilderoy Lockhart. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but uh, let me ask you something. Does this look like a handwritten letter to you? I don't know. <laughs> kind of weird, honestly. What did you send me, Justin? Are you sure this is for me? Because I don't really remember. Or did somebody actually wrote me a letter that, um, <laughs> that, that somebody actually wrote him a letter that somehow ended up putting in my name as Animat? I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of a weird thing, but yeah, I guess, uh, what the fridge is his name? Gilderoy. So yeah, I guess I got this, uh, little message from Gilderoy, I presume. Okay, so anyways, moving right along, it looks like we got another card and it's going to be coming from Colin Warmbrod. Okay, so this is gonna be coming from Colin, so let's see what we have. Okay, and this shall be a uh, horse pooping candy, where jelly beans really come from. Yeah, this is legit uh, uh, a unicorn just pooping out jelly beans. Yeah, and I guess it, it pees at like, and I guess like right now that same unicorn is too busy peeing at Starbucks for selling those popular, like, what, what is it, a latte or something? Anyways, uh, fellow Animad, wishing you a magical Easter. Just be careful of the brown ones. Happy Easter, sincerely, Colin. I'll just say right now, when it comes to jelly beans, it's not the brown ones you should be careful about, it's the black ones. Because those things can be really nasty, trust me. Oh boy. So yeah, as you can probably tell, I am not a fan of black licorice. It's just, ugh. Like, I think a comedian actually said it best that it tastes like unhappy. <laughs> Alright, anyways. Uh, our next letter is going to be coming from Saul M, so let's see what Saul has for us this time. 
Hi Animat, it's Saul again. Thanks for reading my letter from the March 2017 episode of What's in the Box. I really appreciate that you read most of my questions on my letter, so now it's time for letter number two. So to clarify in regards to your question about Cartoon Network being a channel or a studio, it's both. Uh, they have a studio in Burbank, California, and a network in Atlanta, Georgia. Similar to Nick with their studio in Burbank and their network HQ in Rochester, New York. And just like Nick, as you mentioned in an episode of the Animation Podcast, and just like Nick, uh, Cartoon Network, the network, is where most of their issues stem from. Also, in regards to John Paula, the microwave guy, as you remember, he's still around, but he's having uh, he happens to be a film critic like you with his film review show, Movie Night with Jonathan Paula. He reviews anything from animation to action to indie, anything. P.S. Uh, I thought it was funny when you thanked me for the letter but call me John because of the topic of John Paula, but it's okay, pal. Oh, I might have had that little mix-up then. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, anyone can mix, mix up names. Also, I like you when you went to Con Bravo last summer. I'm also going to Phoenix Comic Con this May, and I'm hoping I'll be having a great time. Uh, what would you suggest me to have fun uh, at since it's my first time at a huge fandom convention like Con Bravo? Well, if you want to go and have some fun at a convention, all you have to do is just go to different panels, go to the ones that would uh, peak to, you, to your interest, and also check around the marketplace. That that's also that's also a great area that's a lot of fun to go and check out. So those are the two high recommendations that I suggest that you go. Uh, oh, and I also noticed that you enjoyed Troll Hunters. So did I. Uh, it's one of DreamWorks' best shows since Voltron Legendary Defenders. Uh, let's hope the next season will be great. And also, rest in peace to Anton Yelchin. Question time. All right. Who is worse with animation? The Weinstein Company or Lionsgate? Well, honestly, so far, like, both of them, they're kind of, like, small in terms of animation. Like, they didn't really do too much. But honestly, I would probably go with the Weinstein Company since they've handled it a bit more and they've handled a lot of bad ones, so maybe them. Uh, what other shows you've been catching up since uh, one of your resolutions is to watch more TV aside from Troll Hunters? Uh, honestly, I've not been doing well on it. Uh, it's been a while since I've fully seen a TV show, so I can't really answer that one. So yeah, that, it's one of those resolutions that uh, I, I'm not doing well with. Uh, what smartphone do you have? I ask in case uh, I and others want to send you a phone case as a gift. Uh, I'm just going to say right now that I don't really use phone cases, so uh, not necessarily an ideal gift considering that uh, I don't really use them. I like I just keep with what like whatever version of iPhone that I would have. I just use an OtterBox no matter what. I ain't changing that, so uh, just a little heads up. Uh, that's all, pal, and until then, for my language to yours, adios and au revoir. Okay, so that's a nice little letter from Saul. And now we're going to move on to another card from uh, Brian Walsh. So, oh, I guess I can easily open this time. Uh, then we got paint. So we got, like, uh, a little comic right over here, if you can see it, hopefully. I don't know. All right, I don't know. I'm just hoping that the light doesn't like make it too white or anything like that. Anyways, painting Easter eggs is fun. And then a little chicky comes in and says, dude, that's my brother. Uh, hope this hatches into a very happy Easter. Your friend, Brian. Oh, okay. So a little short and sweet card. And uh, yeah, I, I noticed that we have a little bit of a theme. Like we, we, I, I'm getting more cards in this, like both Easter and St. Patrick's Day. So we're pretty much having a St. Patrick, a St. Patrick's Easter for uh, this episode of What's in the Box. Okay, so moving right along, we got another letter. And this one is going to be coming from Benny Botros. So let's see right over here. Hey there, Animat. Thanks again for putting my art in the thumbnail. And I'm sorry, I know it'll be a month old by the time you read this, but I gotta say a, uh, uh, oh, a, cup, uh, a couple of things about the Beauty and the Beast remake. Uh, first, do you also find it funny that Ian McKellen rejected the role of Cogsworth in the original and now he's him in the remake? Well, that is actually pretty interesting, but honestly, like a role that I would find that would be perfect for another actor who actually rejected the role of Cogsworth 
um, would actually be John Cleese. That would actually, like, John Cleese would actually go and make a great Cogsworth, honestly. I don't know why they didn't go with him. Uh, but anyways, uh, guess we got a new Bill Murray. Uh, Lorenzo Lamas, uh, Garfield, Ghostbusters, uh, in fact, also, uh, you probably don't care about this one, but, uh, who else wonders, uh, who Cadenza would look like if uh, he he would be in the original. Oh, like the piano guy? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, the closest thing that we have Cadenza in the animated one would be the Tim, Bur the, the Tim Curry organ. So I guess it's like you would have that. Uh, but anyways, uh, on a different note, what live action film do you think deserves an animated remake? Honestly, the, the variety is so big. I mean, like, any answer would not necessarily be a bad answer. Uh, whenever, like, if you would have the right people. I mean, it is extremely rare that you would have uh, a live-action film turn into an animated feature. I mean, one of the very few ones that I know actually did happen would technically be Metropolis. But, yeah, honestly... Like, I don't really have a distinct, like, a specific answer on this one, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll just see. Oh, yeah, and technically there is another one. There is the Animatrix, Techn well, technically. I mean, it's not a direct adaptation of, uh, of the Matrix, but, like, it is a live-action film turned into animation, but, uh, <clears throat> anyways, anyways. Also, I gotta ask, what's your next animation look back? It sounds like Cartoon Network. Uh, oh, it sounds like Cartoon Cartoons, but you did quite a few of those in the uh, Hanna-Barbera lookback. Also, sorry to get back to this, but uh, who would you have play? Oh, who would you have to play Belle instead of Emma Watson? Uh, yes, it it is actually going to be Cartoon Network. And as for who would play Belle instead of Emma Watson, honestly, that answer would be anybody. Honestly, because. Whoever you would pick, it's going to be a step up to Emma Watson as Belle, no matter what. Um, well, enjoy the pictures from Benny. P.S. I do hope Pokematic likes that pick. Uh, P.P.S. Some, uh, someone else, oh, something else I want to ask. You know Finding Nemo the Musical? Uh, if you could pick any non-musical animated Disney or Pixar film to be a stage musical, what would it be? Uh, yeah, I am definitely aware of uh, Finding Nemo the Musical, which is that little, th uh, like, that little show that would happen in Disney's Animal Kingdom. But, um, I, I, I don't know if I would legit call it that, uh, a musical. Like, a real musical, I would consider that something that would be on Broadway. Like, Finding Nemo, that's just a show that's going on in, um... At, like at Disney World and stuff like that like they could do whatever show at the Disney parks. So uh, I don't know like a non-musical animated Disney Pixar film to be a stage musical Again, honestly like with the live action to animated like you could pretty much pick anything as long as you have the right people You could pretty much go and do it. All right, but anyways, we got some uh, fan art time uh, we got apparently trying to make a <laughs> So apparently Benny wants to make a reference to the Emoji Movie with that one trailer right here. Alright, so next up it's uh, me as Mr. Potato Head. And then finally we got another one where apparently, oh my god, yes. <laughs> this thing, you just lost the game. Y you know, the funny thing is, is that I got so much crap in the last episode of What's in the Box. Like, I was clueless of the game, and, like, people were just so mad at me because apparently they also lost the game. So I think I am aware about what the game is, I think. But, yeah, so apparently this is what's going on. I lost the game. <laughs> Coming in from some angry light bulbs. Alright, so anyways, um, it looks like we got another letter from Flo Anderson, who would like to speak a little bit more uh, after the little St. Patrick's Day card. Dear Animat, uh, hi again. I tried to send you a St. Patrick's Day card for you in the last episode, but I needed to put extra postage on it, so I guess it's too late for it 
uh, being that episode since it doesn't look like you received it. Uh, if you get it in this episode, I hope you won't mind it being so late. Oh, don't worry, I don't mind it at all. Uh, in fact, it, it did add a little spice to the beginning of this episode. Uh, anyways, by the way, have you considered making a top 10 video for your favorite Studio Ghibli films? I'd like to see that someday. Um, I don't know, like, I remember during the rumors and stuff like that, like, what, if ever Studio Ghibli would close down, like, I would consider it, but, I don't know, like, I would probably save something like that in my back pocket, like, I want to wait until the perfect time to do so. Uh, now, by the time you're reading this letter, I'll probably have turned 27 since my birthday is on the 6th of April. Uh, I hope all is well with you, take care, much love from Flo. Uh, P.S. I drew you a picture of a certain uh, oh of a certain derpy cat acting out a Disney scene. I hope it makes you laugh. Okay, and uh, if you have already turned 27, then uh, happy belated birthday, Flo. So I guess with that said, let's see the uh, little art that we got right over here. The what the what the oh my god, acting out a Disney scene. <laughs> So apparently, I'm guessing uh, <laughs> this is the cat from uh, Ratatouille. I don't know, like honestly, from the looks of it, I guess the cat is just walking on poop. <laughs> that's that's my guess on it. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but uh, like I guess I don't re like remember this scene too much from whatever Disney film this is, but like I, I guess uh, Flo, if you can, maybe like you can explain a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, anyways, like that, that's so far my interpretation is that it's the cat, it's the cat from Ratatouille in a giant field walking on poop, basically. <laughs> All right. Very, very cute flow. Very cute. All right. So anyways, uh, the next thing that we have right over here is going to be coming from Gresham Inc. Dear Animat, it has been long that I haven't gave you a letter. Sorry. There was a letter that the mailman was supposed to give you, but it did not work. So let's move on to my question. Uh, what are your thoughts on Armin's early man coming to 2018? Well, so far we've only had one trailer from it. It's just like a short, quick teaser trailer, but it looks cute and it definitely has a lot of promise and it's probably one of my most anticipated films of 2018, considering that this is an animated film directed by Nick Park and I'm definitely a huge fan of the guy, so uh, I'm definitely hoping that it'll turn out great. So anyways, uh, that's my question for today. It's time to move on once again to pictures. I hope you will enjoy them from Kaden Gresham. All right, so let's see what we got right over here. Uh, hold on a sec. Oh, okay, I reckon it's like... <laughs> For a moment, I was wondering, like, who is this guy? And then I realized, okay, it's heavy from Team Fortress 2. Okay, holy crap! Like, it kind of, like I was freaking out at first. I was like, like, why are you drawing me a, a picture of a random person? But no, okay, it's it, it's heavy. Okay, it, it took me a while to recognize, but yeah, it, okay, we pretty much got heavy. All right, sandwich man, and then we also got. What the fridge? So apparently this is me and a character named Jeffy. I don't even want to know about who Jeffy is. But uh, yeah, I guess this is a character that's supposed to look special. I really don't know. So I'm not going to ask any questions, but... Anyways, okay, with all that said, thank you very much, Caden. Uh, okay, thank you very much. So, uh, next up that we got is going to be coming from uh, Mika Man. So, uh, let's see. Wait, I got a feeling that maybe I have mispronounced this name before. So, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, hold on. I, I don't know. If I did mispronounce it, I'm sorry. Uh, let, let's see what we got. Oh, boy. Okay, here, here we go. Here we go. All right. Anyway, Mika. Okay, my oh Mika, Mika. Okay, I was close. I was close. All right, uh, dear Animat, it's Mika. Hope you're doing well. First of all, I wanted to say that I loved seeing you and Joey Tedesco open the Mr. Co. Contributor Awards. Also, congratulations on your wins this year. I voted for you in every category you won in. Uh, next, I also enjoyed your Beauty and the Beast review. Now I'd like to share some of my pros and cons about the movie. 
So, uh, pros are the costumes, sets, at the song Evermore, and, Be and Belle's beard line at the end of the movie. The cons, the effects on the objects, and the time travel scene. Yeah, like, honestly, that whole scene related to the book, like, that book, in general, in that reboot, is entirely pointless. It adds nothing to the movie whatsoever. Uh, anyways, uh, that's all for now. I hope to share more stuff with you in the near future. But until then, see you later, dude. Sincerely, Micah. All right. So hopefully I'll remember the name Micah so that I can get that name right. So yeah. All right. Thank you for that little piece, Micah. Anyways, uh, we actually, funny enough, we actually got two letters from Jack Zimmerman, so I guess I'll go and start off with uh, the first one right over here. Uh, let's see what we have. Hopefully it'll be the right one to open. Uh, let's see. No, not you. Alright, so we'll start off with this letter. Alright. Uh, Dear Matt Brune, enclosed here was a drawing that I did for my fi uh, for my favorite film from 2016, Zootopia. Uh, all I did was I traced the images for for reference. I know it sounds cheating, but it was just ju uh, oh, it was just for practice. I've drawn this picture in January of 2016, about two months before its release. Uh, it was nice talking to you. Sincerely, Jack Zimmerman. Uh, P.S. Would it be possible if there was a Zootopia 2? Well, that's not me to say if there's going to be one. That would be up for Disney. Maybe they would do it. Maybe they won't. Who knows? Uh, anyway, so apparently this is... Uh, this is apparently Jack's drawing of Zootopia that we got right over here. So, yeah, it's actually pretty nice. Like, yeah, it's traced over. But, yeah, you know, like, this is pretty good. So, at least, like, it'll give people something to just draw over. So... Yeah, it's really nice. Really nice, Jack. Really nice. All right, don't worry if it's either cheating or not. Like, a lot of people do that, especially kind of like in terms of the early steps to do some professional drawings and stuff like that. So, anyways, let's get into part two into what we have. Let's see what this one has. Dear Matt Brunet, I haven't written for you in a long, long time, possibly forever, uh, but things have changed since I wrote to you last time. I am now living in Los Angeles, California, and I am studying animation at Exceptional Minds, which is a uh, vocational animation studio for young artists on the autism spectrum. Uh, I might have heard of Exceptional Minds, actually. That actually sounds familiar. Um, where they worked on recent Marvel movies and various other movies. Uh, if you want to find out more of my place, uh, just go to ExceptionalMindStudios.org. And can you send out uh, a donation there? Oh, and can you give me a special... Oh, can you give a special shout out to my school? Uh, I love to hear it. So yeah, uh, just to say right now, if you guys are interested to know more about uh, Exceptional Minds, then all you have to do is just go to, apparently, ExceptionalMindStudios.org. So yeah, uh, anyways, we got a few questions right here. So, favorite Marvel movie? Uh, even though I'm not too big on... Stu on uh, yeah, I'm not necessarily too big on uh, superhero movies. I would say my favorite one so far would be Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool. Uh, favorite Star Wars movie? Ooh, very good question, but I would probably go, uh, honestly, somewhere in between, like either New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. One of those two. I mean, they're definite classics. So, uh, thank you for your chance to read my letter, and I hope uh, for my bet. Oh, and I hope for my best in the future on the animation industry. Sincerely, Jack Zimmerman. And uh, good luck to you at Exceptional Minds. Hopefully, you'll have a lot of fun there, and you'll enjoy your time uh, doing some movie magic and some nice animation. All right, so we actually have our final letter right over here, which is apparently this big uh, envelope that doesn't really have a name. So let's find out who it is. And it only has one piece of a paper. So, anyways. Uh, dear Animat, my name is Daniel T. Shire. I am 15. I live in Arizona. I am a huge fan of you and your show. I began watching your show when the animation look back Hanna-Barbera fell in, and I fell in love instantly. Uh, you inspired me to be a critic on YouTube. Uh, I quit pretty quickly after because I am a horrible critic. 
Uh, I'm better at writing scripts, stories, and such. Uh, don't worry, dude. I mean, the, the important thing is, is that you do what you love. Sometimes you have to experiment with a few things to know, like, what you can and what you can't do. And I mean, dude, just saying, dude, you're 15, so you have so much time to go and discover what you love to do and who you are in general. Trust me, you'll have a long journey ahead for uh, to figure out like who you are and have a bit of a self-discovery. Like even I'm young, I still have a lot of things to learn about myself. So don't worry, uh, you, you'll have plenty of time to figure out what you love to do. So at least you're on the right path. Like doing so is actually great. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, questions. Uh, have you ever played the game series Fallout? Honestly, no, I have not. Uh, I asked because I wanted to make you some artwork and stories of you and other Mr. Conan friends' personalities. If you do not know what Fallout is or what it's about, please please be sure to address it. So, yeah, I am aware that it exists, but other than that, I have never played a single Fallout game, so I don't really know. But if you want to go and do your story of Fallout that would feature me and other Mr. Code people, go ahead and do so. Don't let me stop you with my lack of knowledge on it. If you think you could pull out a great story with it, go ahead and do so, trust me. Like maybe I won't get it, but I'm sure other people from Mr. Code will probably understand it. So uh, don't, don't worry, don't worry about me, just do what you wanna do. Uh, you obviously keep track of what's going on in animation and such, so much, uh, oh, so you must know that Disney's remaking The Lion King. Personally, I'm worried, I'm paranoid for some reason that they will use live, act uh, live actors instead of lions, or maybe the animals will look horrifying in CGI like they did in, Be in the Beauty and the Beast remake. These two issues worry me, especially for Timon and Pumbaa. Uh, they have the potential to look like horrifying CGI monsters, or maybe they will be portrayed by live actors that don't fit the part. Are you worried for this remake like I am? From Daniel T. Shire. Now honestly, when it comes to the remake of The Lion King, I am a little bit mixed on it. On one hand, I do feel like it's kind of pointless and kind of like the Beauty and the Beast remake. It's just made to just really cash in and profit on this trend that's currently going on. And it could go horribly wrong. But at the same time, there are ways that it can actually go right also. Considering that it is going to be worked on by Jon Favreau, and he's already done such a great job with the live action remake of The Jungle Book. And even if they actually do use live actors, I wouldn't mind that whatsoever. It could actually turn out to be something that could be more reminiscent to the Broadway show. And I've seen that thing and it really was amazing. So if they would go in that direction and actually use live actors, maybe it could turn out great. But honestly, we don't know what's going to be going on with it whatsoever. So honestly, like at this point, the only thing I can do is just keep an open mind and just see how it goes from here. Like... Maybe, like, I can have a bit of a judgment, just a little bit, if we see a trailer, which I don't think we'll see for maybe, like, another two years, but I don't know, we'll just wait and see with how that goes. But anyways, that is pretty much gonna be it with all the letters that I have, so I just wanna thank everybody who has sent me a letter and who also sent me a little uh, St. Patrick's Day or Easter card. But now it's time, we're going to be moving on to some of the big stuff that we got right over here but we will only do that for next time so with all that said see you later dudes